everybody welcome back to the channel we've been driving all morning got Boone and Taylor with me and uh, we've burned about a three-quarter tank of fuel getting to where we're at and we're 1.6 miles away but if you guys have been following the channel for very long I've been uh, debating on getting a new trailer and well shoot lately it seems like I've been spending a lot of money which I don't know some of the stuff's been necessary but yeah I spent a couple bucks but this trailer I actually ordered three months ago and I'm just now gonna pick it up. I came all the way out to the middle of Nevada to get it because that's the best deal I could get and I like this uh, the guy salesman's attitude and his voice. If you guys follow PD Diesel uh, he's a hotshot guy. This guy kind of sounds like him so I'll try getting action him talking and we're gonna roll up to this trailer but and this uh, the salesman he drives a drives a Dodge Cummins so that didn't sway my vote he was just cool and he was willing to swing a deal not YouTube related before shout out before I even told him YouTube was involved he was willing to make the best deal so props to him on that so we'll uh, catch you guys up when we're looking at this trailer let's see how do we navigate this section All right, guys, made it out here looking at my new trailer, but I uh, want to introduce the salesman. This is Dave. How's it going? And uh, what's the name of your shop out here? The so. trailer store here in Winnemucca, Nevada. And uh, I talked to quite a few outfits before I ordered this trailer, and he was by far the coolest salesman <laughs> that I talked to on the phone, and uh, he's just a cool in person, and he's not, not trying to BS me too much, I think, right? Only for fun. Oh, okay. <laughs> not for personal. But, okay, nope. anyway. So here's the new trailer, guys. We got a. It's uh. It took three months, right about. Close to three. Three months, months yeah. to get this sucker. I don't even know how we go into this. Where do we start? Well, you got just about everything that a trailer should have or need, but for ease of use and comfort. I mean, you got right down to you know you got your 212. You're riding on 16 ply tires. You ran the disc brakes, which is great, and then you ran electric over hydraulic for that. And then the system also runs your hydraulic jacks here, which are an extremely fast and easy way to hook up. I mean, there's no cranking on this thing at all. Yeah. And then you're running the oak deck, which is the superior deck if you're running any type of track system at all. This stuff is not slick. It's just going to be tough. The only thing you have to do to this is add some type of protectant, like sealant, oil, whatever you got. And that's going to make this thing last a lifetime. I forgot to mention the Mac Daddy of it all. Oh, but it is, they are the 12K axles, but I upgraded to the 17.5 wheels, but it has a hydraulic dovetail. 17.5 wheels with 16 ply tires. This is the same type of tire wheel system you're gonna find on the 40,000 pound GPW yeah. trailer. So. So your, your tires are the least of your problems on this trailer. I mean, everything else is gonna just last forever. And what, what do you call the, the upgraded suspension? Well, that's an adjustable suspension. That's your equalizer right there. You're still running a leaf spring suspension. Everything is super heavy duty. I mean, that's a one inch bolt right yeah, there. Yeah, but I mean, look at that's this. That's a three inch leaf spring. Yeah, she's uh, she's thick. That is oh. all I can say. She is nice and thick. I went with these axles because I wanted to get away from the drum brakes. I know you can get the hydraulic uh, powered or electric hydraulic drum brakes that uh, Arthur has on his trailer that he likes a lot. But I really, I, I just been craving disc brakes for a long time. So I had to get these axles, which I'm not bummed about at all. It'll work out perfectly for, you know, the weight that I'm going to be hauling. This thing is the uh, engineered beam. And if you look, if you're getting right down to it, so what the engineered beam really boils down to is you can see that the frame tapers up right here where the axles are. This gives you that ultra low profile stance that every other guy out there is running your traditional I-beam frame. Yeah. This thing is, it's taller, it's stronger, it's lower, it's just about everything you can want. I mean, what do we say? You're about 1,100 pounds less than your current trailer? Yeah. And 11, it's longer. Yeah, no, yeah. my current trailer is uh, Texas Pride 30K trailer, 20 plus five with the heaviest monster ramps known to man. That's why hydraulic <laughs> dove. So, and that one it says on their site that trailer weighs 8500 pounds before the mega ramps before the spare tire and everything and this one it says dry weight on this one is 74 a little bit of change yeah and with the engineered beam it's supposed to be stronger so 
square. Well, what's nice about the engineered beam, and it's really hard to tell in camera, but this beat, this whole deck arches, right? So when you get out there and you get your load on this thing, it's going to straighten out. Just like your camber and your axle, like on a smaller utility trailer, when you get your load on it, it straightens out, and that just adds increased strength. So instead of having it sag down, you're sagging straight. Mm -hmm. And that's... That's going to be a uh, long-term profile gain. I mean, you know. Like the big rig trailers do. Exactly. So, a couple more things that we got. I added the uh, I added the oak deck. It comes with the pressure-treated pine normally, but you guys seen the Prime Tech, what it does to, you know, pine. It just rips that up. So, it wasn't really too much more expensive of an add-on to get the oak in there. No. And uh, I added the winch plate up here, and I have the uh, receiver style bracket for my winch so i can just slide that in there and that'll be good and up here it's got a perfect spot to throw a toolbox i don't have to do any of that stuff i had to all that welding and i on my other trailer you know i welded a box up in there Absolutely. and then spare tire spare is, tire is a must for this type of wheel you're not going to find that at your corner uh yeah. corner tire store for sure and it's not in a difficult spot my other one's up there on the tongue oh, so yeah. well, i mean you can get up on the truck bed to get it but it maybe if you're running a cabin chassis and you know of course you can add an additional battery or you can run some electrical down to the you see on this system you're only running one battery one hydraulic pump and your hydraulic disc brakes are in the end there mm -hmm. um, of course you when you're sitting there so you might want to have an additional battery something that's wired to this or a solar panel charger like maybe up on the neck oh yeah run something too that way you never have to worry about your battery you do have your 110 charger right here you just plug an extension cord on this side so that's nice and easy as far as that goes so you can run this thing and do an extension cord anytime you want. So we're running a still well system. So you, that's the valve right there that'll control the jacks versus the hydraulic dove. So that's on the jacks up front that's now? on the jacks right now. Look how quick that moves. That's one of those. Look how low you can put it. Set it all the way down. Oh, buddy. We're that's, not gonna that's hit. That's almost like a theft deterrent. Yeah. Look how quick she's moving though, man. That's what saves uh, all that extra energy you're working on when you're trying to do stuff. They're like, the other night I was doing fan clutch in my work truck, 04. Yeah. And uh, I didn't quite get done. I was like, oh, I'll just take 5500 tomorrow. And I was like, I don't want to take the trailer off because I have to, you know, jack it up and then pain in the butt don't even want to do it yeah so yeah. i was like i just went and fixed the regular truck because it was easier to me for some reason and this who that, cares now that's the problem is when you get down to the end of the day you're at the end of the work and you get home and all you want to do is relax and enjoy the night you know whatever you want to do our case is is the still well stuff is pretty new uh-huh um, having that valve switch over, that might not have been something that they were doing. So you might have had to add a whole other electric pump, battery, uh, and that might have had probably twice the price it cost. It does have a remote control, yes, so does. I can do the jack if I switch it for the front. Obviously, same system. Yep. And then for the dovetail, I think I went the wrong way. Did I go the wrong way? No, it should be going there. I'm new at this. It's my first day. <laughs> Another thing, it's got a 12 foot tail. The trailer is 30 feet long, but it's got a 12 foot tail because it hinges two feet farther forward. And that gives you uh, a shallower, steep ramp, however you say that. It just, it's uh, less, the, it's the more mellow. The that you're running on is, it's easy enough to get a low profile car on. It. Yeah, it is. It's like walking up a wheelchair ramp, really. Pretty close, yeah take a big guy with a wheelchair ramp or a wheelchair to <laughs> heave himself up that but you get the idea it's quite a bit uh mellower and then they got the boards tucked in underneath here instead of leaving the ends exposed so the steel is going to take the heat rather than chewing up your boards but i like that i, I really i don't know if you mentioned it any other time so like your light bar in the back there is on a spring loaded it's a spring loaded bar Tuck see it's on the oh ground. yeah and when you go down, it actually tucks up into it. So it's on a spring-loaded unit, so that's where your taillights sit, where a lot of people ask that. What happens to my taillights? Like, you hit that, it actually raises up underneath. Yeah, this thing ain't gonna be dragging or nothing like no. my other one does. There's one job, I was leaving a job towing that Prime Tech. Took off in second gear to beat the traffic. And the rear end trailer drug damn near stopped the truck slamming it in first and just gave her the beans and it pulled it through but for those of you that are 
I'll sell you some of these stickers. You guys want them? Give me a call. But I think if there's anything, I don't think we forgot anything that was added onto this thing. Uh, everything else is pretty on the standard side of things. I mean, this is this is probably one of the simplest, easiest things done. In comparison, to like your other trailer, you know, this one's going to be set up as one piece for the tongue, mm -hmm. one piece for the end frame going back. But the weight loss isn't the fact that they didn't use, you know, enough steel. They just designed it accordingly. And rather than have, like I've always been saying, the bulky angle iron or bulky I beams all over the place, like my other trailer does, uh, you know. It's got one piece. There's not a bunch of welds and stuff in here. So. Well, and what, what's the best benefit to having this particular tongue is that, and you look, and I'll give you that picture so you can make sure to show anybody watching this video, is there's, they've actually put this to the test and you're talking about how much pressure an I, a traditional I-beam tongue, now they're comparing it to themselves. The manufacturers compare it to their own standard I-beam tongue mm -hmm. and versus in comparison to this fleet neck tongue. And you're talking about all the pressure in here. It's unbelievable the difference that you'll be able to see in there. I mean, you're talking about a lot less stress on the trailer itself. Yeah, yeah. I'm liking that. And then it also up here, this is a standard option for their... Um... That's the uh, BX1 from Bulldog. And it's, I want to say, they do mention it. It's like in the neighborhood of like 30% larger than your standard gooseneck coupler. Mm -hmm. And what it boils down to is this plate on the bottom here is much larger in comparison. So when it sits down on your ball, it's a funnel. Can, yeah, it's a funnel. It, basically, that's what you're looking at. And it sets down on that ball a lot easier. So you get a little bit more slack in when you're hooking up. And it, it's got a, mine doesn't even have the option right off the bat for a lock to go in there. That's, yeah, they put the pin on there, but you know, Man. lock is always a good deal too. Well, if I leave it at a job, you know, I, you know, you don't want to leave an investment nope. there with somebody's like, oh, I got a gooseneck. Let me just steal this thing. So I think if we forgot anything, I'll come back through it later on when I do a follow up videos on this thing. But I want to go check out the rest of the trailers he's got to offer here and check out inside the shop. And I don't, do you want money? I, did you... Six or seven dollars is going to cut it. Take five. Maybe. Oh, okay. <laughs> I've been watching this show on Netflix. Uh, it's like they store old crappy cars. Right. And uh, somebody comes up to it. They're like, how much you want for it? He's like, 40 grand. And he's like, you take 20? <laughs> Everything. They cut it in half. It they in go half. both ways. And he's trying to buy something. They cut it in half. They end up settling for like, right, 30 or something right, right in the middle. <laughs> but never a bad way to go. All right. So... Okay, so this is just a side note, but we passed this guy 200 and something miles ago, probably six or seven hours ago, and he was going through Reno traffic in the middle lane, slowing everybody down. It looks like he stabilized his little trailer, but I think it's a Harbor Freight trailer behind this tricycle because it was wiggling all over the place, or he lost something, but it looks like it's doing a lot better now. Uh, bump him with the trailer. <laughs> My bad. Yeah, no, that pretty much unacceptable. He's going like 45 mile an hour out in the middle of I-80. Screw that. Well, one full tank getting out of here to grandma's about 300 miles hammered down, but check it out. That is over a dollar a gallon cheaper than it is in California. We're in Battle Mountain, Nevada right now. I'm gonna go to grandma's house and hang out with her for the night. But before I end this video, I'll give a uh, personal touch on this trailer and why I went with everything I went but for now we're gonna get every penny worth of cheap fuel that we can better be quality but cheap price let's add to the randomness Jeff didn't he didn't want to bring his Nissan or is it broke down oh, the other one he got rid of the little truck. oh did he it fell apart <laughs> I don't what the heck this one's ready to I think two but I ain't bringing nothing Park, there, with you? hey what do you say? I do what I want. I'm going to do a citizen's arrest. I don't know what I'm talking about. 
Where'd you bring this beauty up today, huh? Yeah, she, went, she hadn't been back to Cummins for 27 years. And That's a nice hat you got there, sir. Yeah. It was on the floor in the whorehouse. <laughs> Pop the hood on this thing for me. So, uh, he had a little bit low idle. I think I adjusted it. We're going to find out. Because unless you kept a little throttle into it, she'd die. We'll see. Hmm. Flooded it. We got to give her some more. Well, some of the stuff that I tried to do on this first gen last night didn't work out, so I had to go buy some new tools because those craftsman kits I got don't have a 10 millimeter. So went to the hardware store, got some super glue and got some nuts, and this was what I came up with because the low idle to adjust it is this bolt on the back side here, and it is you have to have a special tool to get to it, and this thing was idling at like 400, and that's not quite enough to keep it alive, so. I was looking up last night trying to figure some stuff out and this right here this adjustment it didn't do anything I maxed it all out it wasn't uh, I don't know I don't know how the first gen pumps work but that wasn't working so what I did is borrowed one of these nuts off the back side of this one went to the hardware store and got two more of them and I got about a half thread on this tip one if you guys can see that down in there sticking out because it just just that little bit of an edge to give us a little bit higher of an idle so Jeff fire it up and the truck actually fires right up perfect now did a second ago and then I ran some super glue on those two nuts to make sure they don't back off and I gave them a couple extra there we go sounds nice I gave it a little touch of a higher idle because uh, automatic when he puts it in gear it brings it down to right about where you want it and yeah happy camper but we're about to hop on the road how many miles on the truck Jeff 372,000 372,000 and this thing sounds pretty freaking healthy sounds nice and smooth still so anyway hope the wind wasn't too bad we're gonna hop back on the road uh, another stop before we go home but sideshow with the first gen I know you everybody loves the first gen I certainly do anyway we got her fixed up. Look at his hat. <laughs> All righty, guys. Welcome back. We are home safe and sound. Got here late Sunday evening. Did not get a chance to switch the new trailer over to the 5500 in order to haul a machine to the job the next day. So this thing has just been sitting here holding down the uh, nice gravel driveway. But I know you guys are going to have a million questions, so it's going to be long-winded. I'm going to go through... Uh, the specs on it, the reasons and everything of why I got this when I have one here and all that stuff. But first, I got to say thank you, David, at the trailer store. Much appreciated. Made doing business with you very easy. Uh, first and foremost, I went to him because not the fact that he had the best price out of everybody I called all up and down California and Nevada. But he was willing to call back and it did not take him, you know, if I had a question, email, it didn't take him very long and he wrote back. Next thing being... Ah, uh, he was pretty cool on camera. So thank you, David, for sticking through all the camera stuff. And at the end of this video, I'm going to give a little tour of his uh, yard and show his inventory and all that stuff. So hopefully you guys go and do your business there at David. And I'm, I got a pretty high, you know, like marker set for who I deal with. And uh, he's right there with Global. So he's doing good. But let's go ahead and break down the reasons why I bought the new trailer and why I bought it now. Now, like I said, it's been three months of a wait to get this thing. Uh, basic reason why I got a new trailer is the price on everything is going up. This one's going to wear out someday, and I really, really like the idea of having a backup. I'm not going to sell the old one. This one's going to go into full-time use because it's got the hydraulic dovetail. <laughs> no more breaking my back. Hopefully this extra length works out. But let's go into it. First and foremost, let's give a little information on the old one. 30K Texas Pride trailer. It's fairly new. I think it's two and a half years old, something like that. 20 plus five. That means 20 foot of deck, five foot dovetail. This thing is actually measures out at 26 feet long. Two 15K axles with electric drum brakes. Uh, I didn't upgrade at the time because I didn't have a lot of money. And now this one over here, uh, I don't have a lot of money now after buying this one because this was holy crap expensive. 
uh, even with the great price he did, did me a solid, uh, this trailer plus that truck over there is like the price of this one trailer, which is ridiculous. But the trailer length is 30 feet long. So it's about four feet longer than my old trailer, which isn't really that bad. Uh, the front axle is just a touch farther forward and the back one is touch backwards from what the Texas Pride sits as. And that's not really a big deal. I'm not worried about it. This thing, uh, it feels like it tracks a little bit tighter, but she should get the job done. I was a little bit worried of where those are going to sit, but in relation to my old trailer, be just fine. Next thing is, yes, they have the 12K axles. People are going to be like, why in the heck do you go with 12K when obviously 15K is what you need and they've been working out for you no problem so far. Well, first reason why I want the 12K is because they do not offer the option of the disc brakes on the 15 or 16K axles from this manufacturer. These are the Dexter 12Ks and they have the hydraulic disc brakes behind them. Reason for the disc brakes, why they're so appealing to me is because shall these oil bath axles, the inner seal fail, they do not run the oil straight into the brake drum and contaminate my brakes and cause brake failure. I've had that happen a lot with this trailer. Now they are packed with grease no issues since then so i've lost the brakes towing with this it's not fun thank god i had 5500 with real brakes the 3500 it would have pushed it to the next freaking hill but if these ones fail the rear seals i'm not gonna lose my brakes worst case i do lose my bearings or whatever that would just the same with any of them but i won't lose the brakes i won't be uncontrollable going down a hill and uh, hopefully i'll catch it before they fail that bad and i'll just put grease in them Next thing, why the 12Ks? So check this, they can rate the 12Ks, you know, two together, they're 24,000 pounds, but they can prorate your trailer 25%. So they can legally tag this trailer to rate at 30,000 pounds. But there's a kicker, if you go over 26,000 pounds on your weight rating for your trailer, you're subject to a 12% excise tax on top of the price of your trailer. So sales tax, 8% or whatever it is, plus 12, you're looking at another 20% taxes on top of the price of your trailer that's kind of expensive oh. so going with these 12s that worked out in my favor i didn't really consider that in the beginning but it made a lot of sense so this thing's rated under 26 but it's not going to hurt my payload and i'll tell you why real quick uh this rounded let's just say this thing's even a 26 000 pound rated trailer uh, my truck over here that's going to be behind or towing that trailer probably 99.98% .98 of the time, I have it legally tagged registration at 45,000 pounds. So that means my gross combination weight of the two cannot exceed, exceed 45,000 pounds. So quick, easy math, 20K rated truck plus 26K rated trailer, 46,000 pounds, you know. Uh, actual math is 45.4. I have not really gone over 43 gross so far and uh, definitely haven't gone over 45. So legally, my registration isn't good for over 45,000, but I am rated, you know, physically to haul that still. So we're good on that point. Plus, this trailer, main reason I went with this brand, uh, I never heard of this brand before. You guys mentioned it, by the way, either. But this thing is a thousand pounds lighter maybe even 1500 pounds lighter than this bulky iron of this texas pride that i have here i'll show some uh clips some pictures of how they engineered all this stuff how it benefits versus just the thick bulk steel of this old trailer granted everything can break but if you have engineered stuff that is designed to flex where it flexes and it's got strength where it counts without you know sacrificing weight because you got such thick steel huge benefit with this trailer so uh it's a thousand pounds lighter plus so that's going to help on my payload so i got a thousand pounds back even though i lost four thousand pounds on my rating but then i had another you know concern what if i have to tow with the 3500 then i realized well shoot even if that thing's only rated at fourteen thousand pounds uh you know it's like two thousand pounds lighter than this truck so I think we'll still be in the good as far as those two ratings go. But again, that one's just a personal use truck that does long trips and holds down even more of the asphalt driveway or gravel. But 
We've had a couple issues so far with the trailer. I'm kind of bummed about this trailer is everything that I expected and everything I wanted. But, uh, you know, sometimes you got to work through kinks. And I don't know why I'm always the one that's the guinea pig to work through these kinks. But first thing that happened, picked up the trailer, made another 50 miles up the road to Grandma's house. I ran the speed limit in Nevada, which is about, was it 80? So people do about 80, 85, 90. I don't know. They go fast. They pass me still. I was running 80. Pulled over, got fuel, and all four of the hubs were so hot I could not put my hand on them. So coming back the 300 miles to home, I just uh, ran 70, and all but one of them was still hot. Uh, or no, three of them were cool, and this back left one was still hot enough I didn't want to keep my hand on it. The rest were still warm, but not I couldn't leave my hand on them hot. So that's uh, something I have to look into. They all have oil in them, and so I'm going to check the preload on each and every one of those. But like we said out there, I did upgrade to the 17.5 tires and wheels. Now they come stock with the 16s. That's standard on the 12K axles. Why I went with the 17.5s is because there's more wheel and less tire. So there's less sidewall that can really roll over in tight corners. I'd rather have the tire kind of drag than just wrinkle and fall over. Had bad luck with 16 um, size wheels and tires before. And when I got this trailer, it came with the 17.5s. No issues with that in the tight corners. I mean, I don't like to do it, but uh, it holds a little bit more rigidity in the sidewall. So wasn't too much more to upgrade to these, and I'm very happy that I did. Next thing, the upgraded suspension. That is probably my, like that and the hydraulic dovetail is what I'm most stoked about on this trailer. So that is a upgraded, I think it's a hutch or something like that suspension. I forget the actual name. So when I'm doing a tight corner jackknife, and this thing's actually got a lot more meat to hold my suspension where it's supposed to be, rather than a wrinkle over and break off or something. Because I always, trust me, I always worry about that with this one here. Because look at this. <laughs> it is, I don't know how they can rate what they rate it at with that kind of a cross link. Very dangerous. But we got one more issue to go over. Now, the manufacturer, I don't know if they know it yet, but my dealer knows it because we discovered it there once I, you know, taken delivery of the trailer. But we're going to get it worked out. It's not the end of the world, but it's it's unfortunate. Oh, they're still armed. So the hydraulic jacks up here run off the same pump as the hydraulic dove. But listen to the jacks when they're going down to lift the trailer. When there's no load on it, they sound like crap. So listen here. Let me get a light out for you. I know... I've been uh, messing around with this camera too long, and we're losing daylight. So listen to this. Going down with no load on it, it does this, but once it touches ground, it sounds perfectly fine. But listen here. Oh, got to rearm it. Yeah, so something's vapor locking, hydraulic locking, something in there. Oil is not escaping fast enough and is creating a shutter in the hydraulic lines. The jacks are free. And, but when you go up, see, look, up, down, whatever, work perfectly smooth. Thank God the dovetail doesn't do that, or else I'd be even more bummed. But something in the little diverter box up in here is acting up. Uh, it's not letting enough flow or something through. So the dealer knows I sent him a video, and he's going to send it to the manufacturer and the uh, manufacturer of the hydraulic pump and jacks. Figure out what's going on there because that is uh, pretty much a little decent bummer. But all in all, it's got everything that I was hoping for on this thing. Uh, this sticking out the extra four feet compared to my old trailer. It does track wider. We're going to have to get used to that. No big deal. Uh, it might limit me in some certain spots of jobs. But what I plan on doing right off the bat with this trailer, I, I need to lift the tongue up one more notch. And then I have... They wanted like 150 bucks to add lights right here and i said no we're not gonna do that i'll just add those myself since i actually already have the lights so i need to find a home for these i'm gonna tuck them up there somewhere and i need to order a toolbox for my binders to go up there and probably a chain rack or something something that i can keep out of the way and still use the receiver hitch for my winch and uh i need to put some stain on this oak decking this oak pretty happy that's going to be some tough stuff when it comes to those heavy steel track machines but uh 
What was the other thing I needed to do? I can't remember now. What the heck was the other thing I needed to do? Well, well I guess it wasn't that important, I, I guess. Those are the first couple things that I got planned anyway for this. But uh, since you guys are still on here with me, I know it's been long-winded. And I want to close out this video with some other news on some other stuff. But oh, we got, man, just the bank account is just flying out the window. I talked to the owner of Valera Clutches on a clutch for the G56 swap in the... Uh, 98 truck so he even talked to him and I got the right hydraulics to go in there and then I found a place on eBay a guy I'm too tall these aren't yours I still got the ones for grandma's truck that came out of yours but I got new pedals the clutch pedal and brake pedal for the stick shift conversion on that truck so we got that to take down to the shop tonight and then go over here to the other truck where there's even more crap that I ordered this is ridiculous i don't mean to brag this is just it's just a lot going on right now but i ordered a hitch so i can move these trailers around for this is a skid steer adapter plate with a trailer hitch receiver on it so i can put this on the front of that kubota so i can move that stuff around and then oh my goodness there's just a list of stuff goes on can i borrow somebody's bank account because this one's about to freaking catch on fire new tires for the front of the 5500 one's got a chip in it and i'm kind of it's always been worrying me i think maybe you can see it so i need to get these ones swapped out because you always want to have good steer tires on your truck yeah look at that right there i don't know what happened but that, that always worries me so hopefully this weekend or something i can get those up trailer or tire store and get those swapped out but uh this video hope you guys enjoyed the new trailer and stuck through all the uh explanation behind this new setup uh, we got to work through some kinks per usual it freaking sucks but i'm happy three month wait we got the trailer i wanted it's literally exactly what i wanted and uh it turned out perfect uh it's actually way prettier in person than i really would have ever expected a trailer so anyway <laughs> and i'm gonna jump to the clip you guys get a tour of the uh trailer store's yard with david so check this out out in front of their place. He said his uh, his mom drove this thing to work today. I think that's just cool. 85 and she's still nice and clean. Got a bunch of DCs out there. It looked like uh, somebody robbed you or you're just starting out. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, no, all of our tires sit in that fun uh, container over there for anybody Smart. who wants to rob us. So, you know, we throw a few locks on it. Hey. Got the tilt bed like that. That, one's, that one's the... That one's kind of a Cadillac Haas looking rig. That one's, yeah, that's a long boat as far as uh, trailers go. I just I want to show this part right here. This was cool. We were out here once already looking at it this morning. Look at this. This toolbox. Large enough for a spare tire. That is just freaking sweet. Easy Dude. access to all of it. You're not going to have trouble with the chain binder not fitting in that thing. So what's nice about this particular tilt bed is it's, uh, it's non-hydraulic. It's completely run off gravity, so you go stand on the back, it has a latch on it, and it has a hydraulic brake on it. It's like that, the yellow trailer we got, it doesn't, this one feels like it goes, oh shit. So this, that's got the brake on it. Nice, I might be hitting it. Ah, I didn't have my breakfast. <laughs> there we go. Failure in it. Yeah, less to go wrong. Pretty simple. So they run one hydraulic ram that way and one the other way, so it just puts the pressure back into that. Huh. What the heck? Pretty simple, huh? I was wondering, I was like, they give you a spare? No. <laughs> Not a bad idea, but yeah. no, it's it just what's takes it it takes the pressure goes one way versus the other. Huh. Hmm. Yeah, because my dad's he's got that um tilt deck, but it's just one cylinder that kind of leaks back on itself. So I don't know, I never looked at it, but yeah. it it's if you were to drive uh, excavator up on it, it just. Right. No, that's the valve is the handiest part on there, that's for sure. Well, what else you got around here? You got some PJs here. I like this one. We were talking about that earlier. It's got the drive over ramps. That's the buggy hauler. That's a B5 buggy hauler. Uh, that's a four inch channel uh, car hauler in orange. And why orange, people say? Because it's almost October and Halloween's coming around. Oh. So you gotta, and the splash of color never hurt anybody. And then, of course, 
your standard 14 foot uh, single axle there's nothing real high tech about that i mean when you try to things like tongue boxes cheap options pretty much uh every little trailer you could think of around here this one's gonna be a single wheel isn't it gooseneck yeah no really no that's a uh, drive over fender that's the uh, eqt it's not a, it's not a dually though no it's yeah okay oh, yeah, yes and then that one's got the heavy duty ramps on the rear end that one hasn't haven't worked on that one to get it prepped out that's so. got a wide freaking stance so you know what so the difference between this trailer and like your trailer the reason why your trailer is so narrow on the tongue is because it has to accommodate the dual tires oh so when you run single tires you get a big old wide neck like that so this is actually a nice get up right here those are the heavy duty uh fold up ramps those those are nice not easy to put on so yeah they're not easy to steal either <laughs> but i bought hydraulic dev we're not even going to try to take these down we ain't going to experiment we've done <laughs> we've done our ramp damage for enough how much this one weigh compared to mine has got what's there oh, nine well they're talking putting 98 on it 45 20. oh weighs 4500 pounds that's pretty good that's a 24 footer too Now, if I wanted to, I could put those tires and wheels on my trailer, right? You could. As it sits, or do I got to take a spacer off, or how's that? Well, you don't necessarily have a spacer on your uh, Look like trailer. it. Yeah. So what the, you have is they got the dual wheels, and one goes on the inside, one goes on the outside. So you could do it. You're just going to have more threads on the on the actual nuts themselves. Oh, okay. Um, because that tire gets sucked in on the dual. Then that dump most people think that dump's much larger than it is that's actually only like 10 footer just got high tall side yeah that green one that's a custom color anybody that likes that that's kawasaki green what's uh <laughs> i'll turn the camera all righty guys it is uh it's pretty late now per usual but i just wanted to put that clip in there just so you guys could see his shop see the yard and stuff i wish i could put more information on there for what he's got but pretty much anything that you got an idea for per trailer for brand he's got a lot of connections and all kinds of stuff again david winnemucca nevada uh, if you guys are in local area i mean i travel 250 miles to uh make deal with this gentleman so uh i think he's worth it but again the new trailer's here and i'm pretty happy with it we got to do some stuff but eh, we'll figure it out it's been a long way coming to get this trailer so i wasn't not going to take delivery of it uh being that the fact that well, i didn't know about the hubs and then i didn't know about the uh the jacks until we were up and loaded and about to take off with it but uh it, not like a wheel fell off simple hydraulic fix i'm you know i got a pretty good idea what the problem is but he's reaching out to the peeps uh behind the trailer and uh, until then i'll give you guys more answers when the time comes so the trailer store thank you again and all of you guys it's a fun journey having to take this camera around and show you guys what we're up to and that was uh my grandma's husband jeff that was his first gen that we got fixed up for him so i wanted to clarify that for anybody i didn't buy it off of him I, i've showed it before but it's got a couple miles on it but he likes that old bird but anyway guys officially thank you guys for watching hit them buttons like comment and subscribe and we'll see you later